Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Thanks, Natasha. <clears throat> Uh, Councilor Argument, I just resent the link to Elizabeth Harris, uh, who I guess I didn't, couldn't get access to hers. Yep, she got it. She's on. We're, we're just still light on Councilor's side. I don't have a quorum yet. Uh, yeah, I understand a few more are still in the budget and finance meeting. Okay. Uh, to my knowledge, that's uh, would be Councilor Devlin, Councilor Taunter, Councilor Zeed, um, Councilor McCauley, and Councilor Khan. Yeah, um, well, Councilor Shand uh, should be on then. I don't know where she is. Maybe send her another uh, invitation, Councilor Shand. Sure, I know, she, I know she was just in the other meeting. That might be where she's. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Never mind. I think it was a hope that that 530 meeting might have wrapped up by now. Yeah. Well, it's only 701. Let's just chill out. <laughs> Agreed. We're happy to wait. Okay, uh, we have a quorum now, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, I'm noting electronically that the other, the three members, three voting members who are on are myself, uh, Councillor Eigenman, Councillor Connell, and Councillor Shand. Um, maybe the others will, will trickle in, Councillor McCauley and, and Councillor Z, but I know they had another meeting. Uh, so, 
with that, um, this is a an important day. I think we're going to hear a, a presentation from the consultant Sasaki on what they've come up with, uh, sort of a preferred a preferred alternative rather than various alternatives. And I will turn it over to them. Please go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Councilor Agamon. Uh, this is Andy Port. I was just going to speak to a couple of the initial slides uh, that Sasaki has, and, and then they'll be doing the majority of this presentation. Um, this is just a recap of what we're doing this evening. Um, it's introduction and project uh, process, just kind of recap of um, we've done what is essentially tasks one through six. Uh, we're wrapping up uh, the, the tail end of tasks one through six in, uh, in the design process. Um, after this process, we need to still do obviously final design and plans that are ready for construction, but we have to have uh, a wrapping up and consensus over the schematic design uh, of the park and they've done some significant work in the last couple of weeks um, to circle back with us and show us where they are with that design and also to provide us some idea of uh, the cost estimate and where that stands today. Um, there are also some great uh, illustrations I think we'll be seeing this evening. Um, we did talk before about some of the um, consensus points, uh, and you'll see some of that continued on here in the schematic design. Um, and um, there is a, a, a possibility of phasing construction, obviously, in the future, uh, moving forward, depending on uh, funding sources and, um, and, and things like that. But what we do need is a, a comprehensive, cohesive design, and that's what Sasaki has been working on for us, so that uh, irrespective of where the city is pulling funds from for construction, um, we have that uh, a cohesive uh, waterfront park and, um, and including the visitor center bathroom uh, facility being replaced, that, those temporary facilities. So um, we're looking for some feedback uh, from the group tonight. And we also want to, um, in the next couple of weeks, we know that we have reserved um, October 7th for another meeting where Sasaki will circle back and provide some additional fee uh, revisions for us if there's any uh, tweaks that, that folks are looking for uh, so we can come to an agreement on the, the overall schematic plan for the park improvements that everybody's been waiting for. So again, the, the project team here, uh, I'm just the sort of liaison uh, to uh, working with Chair Argumen, the ad hoc committee, uh, the mayor, other city officials, a um, number of which are represented here tonight with the ad hoc committee, uh, either as uh, members or as resources. Um, and then there's the consultant team. So Sasaki and their various subconsultants, um, BHB working on some of the, the permitting, the plans, uh, LSP, uh, license like professional work for uh, hazmat, uh, you know, conditions in the soil. Um, and various other subconsultants that will be needed. Um, there'll be a fair amount more detailed work that needs to be done during the so-called tax one, uh, seven through nine, which are the final design uh, and also going into construction and construction administration. Um, but um, having consensus over the schematic design makes a lot of that um, uh, much easier to, to move forward with. So in the uh, diagram that some of us have seen before in our presentation uh, from Sasaki, this is the diagram indicating where we are. We're refining the final conceptual plan. Uh, we've heard the uh, previous concepts plans. There were a couple of great uh, options that were given to us showing the various spectrum of uh, design considerations for the bike path alignment, uh, the park space, the parking lot configuration or distribution and things like that. And, um, and they've worked to refine that into one schematic plan uh, as desired uh, by the city and required by the contract. Um, once we have um, conclusion of that process, they will then need to be the, in the so-called future phase, uh, you see that dotted line, the design documentation. And without that, we are not uh, able to uh, have a product that is shovel ready for construction. So it's important as we um, finish up this schematic, just as a project manager for this project, it's important that we all remember that as we wrap up schematic design, it's important that we proceed along with Sasaki's design work um, beyond what we have currently uh, funded and contracted with. Uh, to extend their contract into final design so that uh, while we might have a schematic plan we've agreed to, uh, if we don't have plans that are ready for construction in a timely manner, we will not be able to do the construction in a timely manner or um, in some cases uh, obtain state funding or leverage state funding uh, or gr other grant funding for construction. So it's important that we proceed along that towards the bidding and construction phase. Uh, but we are right now trying to review the uh, final schematic plan from Sasaki, provide feedback to them tonight, uh, and in the next week or so, um, feedback that they can roll into any tweaks to what you're seeing tonight, which I hopefully folks will be, um, you know, uh, pleased with. So existing conditions, uh, there's just a couple of uh, spots here that are worth noting. So the this is just a, an aerial photograph showing the obviously the project site. We have the existing waterfront 
uh, truss property uh, that wraps around. And then we have the two NRA East and West parcels that are uh, within the city's control right now. Uh, we've talked about uh, transition of those lands after uh, uh, construction of the park. But at this time, uh, there are a couple of areas we've highlighted uh, in red there. And what you can see is those are what we're calling areas of integration. And those are areas on waterfront trust uh, property or property that's uh, overseen by the waterfront trust uh, where some physical improvements are needed to integrate the new improvements uh, on the former NRA property with the existing waterfront trust properties. And so we've, we've had some dialogue about those uh, at prior meetings and in various other working groups uh, in between. And what you'll see tonight also is, uh, is importantly how that design uh, those improvements are done in those areas. Um, and I think that uh, is consistent with some of the dialogue we've had before about where the shared use path comes through uh, and where it might terminate, for instance, on the west side in that uh, where the sculpture park is. So and then we have, I'm sorry, Kate, go right ahead. Uh, why don't you finish this piece, Andy, and, and then I'll jump in. Sure. Uh, we, we have some preliminary design principles that we've talked about before. These are uh, very important uh, features or aspects of this project that we're trying to maintain uh, and that we recognize is important to the city of Newburyport and particularly at this, uh, what I keep referring to as a flagship park project uh, for the city because uh, it's so prominently located that uh, it's, it's one of the most notable projects, uh, parks. I won't say it's the most important park in the city, but, uh, but it's certainly um, very important to the city given its prominent location downtown. So all of these pieces are very important to that we have talked a lot recently about um, in the last you know item there the resiliency and sustainability um, we'll have a little bit of discussion uh, there's a cross section uh, tonight we'll see to get an idea of how that works and and um, and uh, we're certainly considering those those factors into the future and the design of this park project um, we're also integrating I know we have Jody Vining our project manager for the um, the bulkhead project and we're integrating uh, a relocation of the dock uh, insertion point uh, in in uh, coordination with that particular project tonight so um, there's connectivity for the waterfront to the downtown, and you'll see uh, some of that with the improvements, including on the Merrimack Street side, the visitor center uh, restroom facility, uh, again, having something permanent after all the years that we've had the, the temporary facilities um, and keeping the character that we've all um, felt is so important uh, along the water's edge. Thanks so much, Andy. So um, for those who haven't yet met uh, the design team, I'm Kate Tu from a landscape architect and principal with Sasaki. I'm joined tonight by Letitia Torme and Mark Dawson, both landscape architects also at Sasaki. And you'll be hearing from all three of us over the course of this presentation. Um, as Andy mentioned, we're gonna start with what we heard from you all over the course of a summer of engaging on the three concepts that we shared with you back in May. And then we'll share the refined concept and how uh, that has really brought together the points of consensus that we heard from the community. Um, and finally, we'll end with a little bit of a discussion on the, the project costs um, and how that can be broken out. So big picture, you all know many of you joined us at the waterfront for pop-up events. We held two of these in, in July and heard from over 100 voices in the public, um, had wonderful, lively conversations, and also asked people to fill out postcards sharing some of the things that they were excited about and some of the questions they still had about what the potential future of the park could be. We also held open an online survey for a whole month over the course of July. And we heard from many, many members of the public, a lot of really detailed feedback about what they liked, what they were concerned about, about the several different options that we shared with you back in May. This summarizes that really we, we heard from over a thousand people as part of this process over the course of the summer, um, which is really exciting. There's a broad uh, swath of input uh, from the community and many people really engaged in the future of the waterfront. And I think you'll see that play out tonight. Of those 1,000 touch points, there were a couple of areas of really broad agreement for the future of the park. And we wanna land on these first before we share, you, share how they have landed in the park. Um, just to note that there was a lot of agreement about balancing parking east and west, so ensuring that there's still an opportunity to park along the waterfront uh, with two access points, and ensuring that those parking areas really felt stitched into the park, so green and part of the park rather than separate parking lots with a clear border between park and parking. The second broad area of agreement was about the shared use path and bringing that through in the most efficient way with really minimal disruption to the existing market landing park that people know and love today. So the consensus was that that pathway should be brought through at the head of the embayment, which would be a really efficient way for bikes and pedestrians um, to move through the park if they're moving along the waterfront 
um, and still have um, a minimal points of, of connection and disruption for the park itself. So we'll share with you how we've landed that in the park design. There were a couple of additional points of consensus that we'll touch on throughout the process. Importantly, the city um, has come to some consensus about dock storage rather than um, having the ramps and the docks um, really in the midst of the park, uh, moving that a little bit closer to the Harbor Master so that the, the core of the park can remain undisturbed from the dock storage and the crane activity. We'll show you how that works. Raising the grade behind the berm to allow more people to sit up elevated over the Merrimack and appreciate views to the water. Ensuring that opportunities for sculpture and playful art are integrated throughout the park um, and have these delightful moments of discovery, but also um, don't overcrowd the park experience um, with too many things and elements. And finally, a materials and character palette that would feel like Newburyport, uh, but be durable for the long term for sea level rise as well as for the many uh, um, uses of an urban environment. So here's our big moment. We're pretty excited to share with you the refined concept, how we've taken all of that feedback that we heard from you throughout the summer and landed it in one plan. Um, Letitia and I are gonna tag team a little bit on, on sharing this plan with you. Um, but really the goal was to provide a cohesive plan which lands all of that public feedback into something um, that, that provides those shared goals for the city of Newburyport. So this is the refined plan. I'm gonna walk you through it and then we'll dive into some areas of focus in particular. Um, big picture, you can see those big moves. So the way that the shared use path comes through in an efficient way, making that connection between where it leaves off um, in front of the Tuscan Grill and where it currently leaves off in front of the Harbor Master, that shared use path will come through at the head of the embayment. Um, at the west side, there's something that we call the West Embayment Plaza. Um, and at the east side, there's something we call Ferry Wharf Plaza. Both of these are opportunities to really slow down that pedestrian and bike traffic that might be moving along the shared use path, um, provide a moment of pause and reflection, um, things like benches um, and um, bike racks and um, uh, sculptures to discover that really slow down that movement um, and provide a feeling of arrival within the center of the park. Um, you can also see the way that the west lot and the east lot have been balanced um, and, and how those uh, moves have been made to really try to integrate that parking within the park um, so that rather than being just a sea of asphalt parking, there's planting um, and landscape, which really allows that parking to feel like it's part of the park and for the park experience to be somewhat shielded from all of those vehicles. Other big moves, you can see that Ferry Wharf Way is coming all the way um, from the street all the way down to the river. And that experience of plaza, which we'll show you quite a bit about, is really framing uh, views to the river, as well as the restrooms and visitor kiosk, which provide an opportunity so to, to arrive at this side of the park and then um, to provide a way to the water with views down to the river as well. Um, so those are the big moves. Um, we also, I would just also note that we are also um, providing these really wonderful sort of grassy living rooms on the edge of the waterfront. Um, so elevating the grade there to provide great views over the berm and to that sparkling and active plane of water. And I'll take us through, this is a cross section through the park. It's cut uh, through the east lot up out to the waterfront and it gives you a view of the existing park and the embayment to the west beyond. So we're looking west back towards the embayment in this cut. And it starts to give you a feeling of how all the pieces in the plan start to work together at this point. The uh, grading in the parking areas so that we can have slightly elevated areas so that the users of the park are a bit screened from the vehicles in the parking area. And also the additional fill at the front, um, extending that grade of the berm back in to create what Kate was referencing as um, these really powerful green uh, living rooms on the park. And this shows you where the a uh, shared use path meets uh, Ferry Wharf Way as it comes through with the plaza, which has a swing trellis feature, which gives you a 
really beautiful new vantage point out over the Merrimack River. And you can see in the, the darker gray color that's showing the areas of fill that we're introducing into the park area, which allows you a more powerful view out to the Merrimack, but also helps to address um, the resiliency concerns for the waterfront. And Kate and I will take you through, these are five uh, focus areas that we've chosen, really the highlights of the park, and we'll zoom into each area. We'll have a more detailed plan graphic and then a couple, one or two on the ground perspectives. So you really start to get a feeling of the experience at those points in the park and a little bit more explanation of some of the materials and the features in each area. The first one is the uh, the junction of Ferry Wharf Way and the Shared Use Path. This is where um, people can be entering the park along Ferry Wharf Way or coming along the Shared Use Path. It's a point at which we've extended the grade of the berm back and even raised it slightly more, which is still about um, three feet higher than the parking lot level that's there now, so that you have a slight rise as you're coming, a very gentle slope as you're coming up to the center section of Ferry Wharf Way and the shared use path. And then that opens this beautiful new vista out onto the Merrimack River, at which point you have the plaza feature there, which has a really beautiful arc of uh, interactive swings where people can stop and pause and have sort of an interactive experience of the waterfront sitting in motion and also easy access out to two of these uh, lawn areas that can have a lot of flexible furnishings, can be programmed in different ways throughout the year, but are just large green expanses for people to enjoy the Merrimack along. And this is an on the ground perspective at that point. Uh, the brick path is Ferry Wharf Way, which would come up through intersect the shared use path and then continue down to the opening in the embayment. So you can see how the swing feature really frames the view out to the waterfront, gives you a place to uh, stop and pause at the water, and then the easy access out to the lawn areas or continuing to the shared use path with the embayment would be down to your west or the a uh, harbor master facility would be off to your east side. And then this is standing at what is the uh, new um, opening in the berm at the embayment where the shared use path intersects with that. So you see in the front what would be your existing materials of the wood of the harbor walk and some of the cobble in front of the uh, granite balustrade and the new materials of the shared use path and the plaza areas to the um, north and south of that, really creating a pretty powerful opening at this point that leads you up to that gentle rise along Ferry Wharf Way or vice versa from that area back down towards the embayment. You can see the uh, swing feature off to your right which is slightly higher than the path so that we have a series of steps down that can really be a new gathering point, similar to the area that you have now, the steps and the balustrade along the uh, stage area, a new, uh, more contemporary expression of that. Patricia, I just note also that the, the pavement detailing here is intended to signal, um, be one of many signals to those who are riding bikes to slow down um, and to dismount as they come across the embayment. And you'll see that in both sides of the embayment connection of the shared use path. It's important. And this is an image of a project that we worked on in Cincinnati, Small, Small River Park. And that also contained a swing feature that was similar program to sit and view out over the waterfront, but providing an element of shade above that um, makes it more of a comfortable area to 
sit in, but it doesn't block um, the views of the waterfront. So this is to kind of give you a feel of that feature. Um, we would obviously design the trellis in um, your park to be more fitting in terms of materiality and expression of the, uh, the canopy overhead. Mm -hmm. And then second area of focus, what we're calling the Harbor Master Plaza. It is um, just to the east of the Customs House, sorry, just to the west of Customs House Way. It is a multifunctional area. It provides the Harbor Master and others daily access to that facility still from the parking area out to the access to the drive for the Harbor Master, but also allows weekly um, fuel truck deliveries to have an area to do um, sort of a three point turn and back in as they do now for the commercial fishing vehicles. And then um, the weekends and other times when there isn't that um, need for the as much for the vehicular access, you can see there are some uh, seat walls in the corner so that it really is a smaller um, occupiable plaza area that could have a small mm. event in it. And it intersects the shared use path in such a way that the also the crane um, can access the next um, opening in the berm, which we're shifting the mm -hmm. operations of the dock storage and all of that further east. Right. <laughs> So this is a view of that uh, plaza area. It's a smaller area than the Ferry Wharf Way Plaza, but it can be, you know, very um, flexibly programmed in the off times that there isn't a need for vehicular access. There's a little bit of an amphitheater seating component to it. They're still allowing um, for views out to the Merrimack, flexible furnishings and also some shade with the addition of a few trees in this area. And you can see to the left um, where the shared use path comes in. So that sort of frames the um, southern border of the Harbor Master Plaza. And this is a diagram showing the crane, how that would come from the parking area, access that first opening into the um, berm out to the Harbor Walk, and then the area in white is a, where the other lawn areas are raised and giving you views out to the Merrimack. This area stays flat so that the docks can be stored there in the off season. Mm -hmm. And then these are two uh, similar diagrams that we showed in our last presentation. The one on the left shows um, more of a daily vehicular, small pickup truck and passenger vehicles out to the Harbor Master. And then on the right is the larger fuel truck uh, delivery vehicle and how that would maneuver itself back into the Harbor Master property. So coming up along the street, we know that the restrooms and visitor center are could be an important part of this project. Um, so the goal here is to provide a little bit of nice frontage right along the street um, to help frame the park against the street. Um, and then to provide a really wonderful gateway down into the park um, with a new way, which really brings you again um, in that historic pattern down to the edge of the water and providing views to the water all along that route. Uh, so you can see the way that the restrooms and visitor center have been configured along the street um, with that pathway going down to the water. Um, and we have a plaza, which we call Merrimack Terrace, um, right behind that building. So it's sheltered from the noise and the hustle and bustle of the street, but provides a shady place to hang out um, much closer to the street than other areas of the park. So similar to the pop-up plaza that is near Summersby Way currently, um, this would provide a slightly more sheltered and shaded space to be um, right along the um, activity of the street. Um, and you can see the way that connects to the west slot and the ample ways in which green is brought into the west lot um, and ways in which you can immediately access the park's pathways and pavement um, from, from the parking area. So this is a view of that potential building. I would say um, we're still very much in development on the architecture of this piece, um, but the goal is to provide a vernacular 
with this piece of architecture that is really consistent with the historic character and culture of Newburyport, um, but allows for a little bit of a modern interpretation and flair to that. Um, we know this is a style that Newburyport is familiar with, um, especially right across the way. Um, and we think that the idea of using brick, um, but using it in sort of an interesting perforated pattern um, that can provide some texture uh, can really um, help to land this structure within the historic context of Newburyport. You can see that um, the area where the restrooms are is aligned along the street, um, and there are ways that in which we will be providing uh, both light into those restrooms from clear story windows, as well as opportunities for art and other elements right along the street. Um, and the visitor center is really open with windows on two sides to the street, really welcoming people in and allowing that experience of learning about Newburyport right on the front steps of the park. And then you can see the way the trellis comes around the back and provides that shady place to be, which really overlooks the park and provides um, an entry and gateway experience down to the park's waterfront features. We have a little bit more information on the architecture here. On the right-hand side are some precedent images of how we imagine brick to be used in a contemporary way. So again, referencing the historic material of Newburyport, but providing um, definition and interest and texture of that material in a contemporary way. And on the left-hand side, you can see a preliminary floor plan uh, highlighting the fact that there are still um, pretty generous number of stalls um, and as well a, a generous area for visitor information with windows on two sides, as well as the important mechanical in, unit um, and a neutral restroom, um, so, sort of more of a family room. Coming down to what we call the West Embayment Junction, you can see that this is just on the west side of the embayment. Um, so it's similar in some ways, it's a contextual partner to the Ferry Wharf Junction Plaza, which Letitia described earlier. Um, but it's low down. So whereas Ferry Wharf is sort of sitting up and has the swings which overlook the Merrimack, um, this plaza sits lower down, um, sort of behind that Merrimack lawn and the living room which overlooks the Merrimack. Um, so it's tucked into this spot where the shared use path is coming towards the embayment um, with traffic coming in the pavement as we just spoke about in one of the previous renderings. A plaza which again provides that activity um, movement, motion, programming, which will provide a number of people and pedestrians, which again will help to slow down any bike traffic, um, bike racks. And then what we are imagining here as a playful boat sculpture, we know you all have had great success with installing playful sculptures all along the length of your shared use path. Most recently, there has been a boat sculpture up by the sewage treatment plant. And we're imagining that, again, this is another opportunity for a moment of discovery and delight right along that shared use path where families and um, people of all ages can pause and enjoy a piece of art. You can also see the way here, the way the west lot and that pathway coming down from the visitor center really make that wonderful gesture another historic way to the water um, and connecting to the boardwalk. So this is a view of that West Embayment Plaza. Again, um, just to orient you, this is a lawn going up towards the river on your left. In front of you is the embayment, um, and this is the actual head of the embayment. So you see the shared use path is coming to that with traffic coming right there where that gentleman is standing, which really will encourage bikes to get off and walk. Um, and then this plaza, which will encourage a lot of activity, which again, keys bikers and other fast moving recreational users to slow down. Um, and watch out. You can see how we would include bike racks in that area for folks that want to pause and really enjoy the park. And then um, an idea of a sculpture which is playful and nautical um, and provides an opportunity for delight and to pause and enjoy the park. Here are just some ideas of what that playful sculpture could be. Uh, you are quite familiar, I'm sure, with this one at the sewage treatment plant, which was just built. Um, and similarly, the hammocks and swings, which are up by your sewage treatment plant, and just some other images of what we think this sculpture could be. It's not a playground, but it's certainly something that could delight children and families and encourage people to stay and enjoy the park for longer. Um, and this is just up on that grassy knoll right next to the, the West Embayment Junction. Um, and we wanted to just share what that view might be like from one of those living rooms, those grassy living rooms. So 
Currently you have the berm and then you have flat areas that are low down behind the berm. The idea of these living rooms is that they provide way more access for more people to sit on the lawn and really be elevated enough to see um, through the berm, through that historic canopy of trees that you have planted along the berm and into the Merrimack River with all of its activity and delight um, that is so captivating for people visiting your waterfront. Last but not least, this is the Summersby Sculpture Plaza. Um, and we know that this is an important end and terminus to the Summersby Way, um, as well as a kind of the edge of the boardwalk and an important area of gathering near the Tuscan Grill. We also know that this is a really important connection to connect the existing shared use path as it comes through between the Tuscan Grill and the parking um, and crosses where the boat ramp access is. Um, so we're imagining that that connection really should be fluid, providing an opportunity for people to safely cross the boat ramp um, and then move in a fluid way into the park along that shared use path. So there are some minimal modifications to the sculpture plaza um, that would be part of that to really um, provide that terminus to Summersby Way, the activity that you currently have in your sculpture plaza, but make room for the shared use path. And then finally, we've heard from many in the public that having some short-term parking right there at the water's edge has been a really important part of some people's park experience. And so we're still providing about four spaces, which would allow for that short-term parking um, and, and the opportunity to just take a peek out at the water um, from your car. So overall, I think we wanted to just end with this overarching view, which we imagine um, re represents a shared vision for Newburyport of an expanded destination that takes what Newburyport knows and loves about Market Landing Park and really expands that into two activated new wings of the park, which will provide more opportunity for many people, um, inclusive of all generations and all types of people that live in and visit Newburyport to enjoy the Merrimack, um, to enjoy your boardwalk, to enjoy events at the park, and to enjoy daily passive use of the park. We imagine this is a destination that you all will know and love for many decades to come and will really shape the way people experience uh, the, the city of Newburyport. So we're excited to share this vision with you all tonight. We're excited to hear your feedback about it in just a moment. Um, before we get there, we do wanna share a little bit about the park. Um, estimate, cost estimate, um, and where we imagine um, you all can be in terms of budgeting um, for the park's cost. Um, so what we'll share with you is a little bit of information that's a review from last time we met, and then some of the updated information about um, how we've calculated park costs based on the vision that you saw tonight. So you have seen this slide before. This is um, just to note um, how the budget for the park was previously allocated before Sasaki came on um, to help you all with the design of the park. There had been a budget set for about $5 million. Um, and based on the area of design, um, that, uh, that equated to about $25 a square foot. We shared this number with you before. Again, this is not today's, um, this is not today's information, um, but just we wanted to retouch on this um, as a just to get, give us all a sense of where the park was in terms of its budget. Um, so you all had allocated about $25 per square foot. We shared this slide with you again last time, um, just to sort of land that current budget of $25 per square foot, about $5 million overall, with respect to other projects of sort of similar size and scale. Um, and I think we noted last time we spoke to you that that $25 per square foot um, puts you in sort of the low to mid range of spending on parks in the area. Um, and really, I think it's worth noting that it's really in the range of other projects that are mostly lawn and asphalt paving. Um, as you get into higher price points, you start to see more differentiation in paving types and character um, and more amenities and features that can be included in the park. Um, so we had shared this with you. Um, you all had had a robust discussion about kind of where, where the park should be. Um, and we wanted to remind you all of that um, tonight as we start to think about the actual costs for the park. Um, I think it's worth noting that we heard very clearly from the public um, that having a palette of materials that is consistent with the character of Newburyport, inclusive of brick and granite um, and other materials that really evoke the historic character and nature of the city is really an important element of the park design to the public. 
So this here is the schematic cost broken down by park area. Um, and we wanted to share this first to really give you a sense of where some of the cost drivers are and how the cost is balanced over the entire field of the park. Um, so just in sort of basic terms, the west wing and the east wing uh, both contain some areas of fill behind the berm as well as the shared use path. And each contain a little bit of plaza area and some specialty paving as it comes through the park. Um, the specialty paving in the west wing is really what's driving its cost just a little higher than the east wing. Um, but overall, those two wings are, are more or less balanced at a little over a million dollars. Um, if we look at the east lot and the west lot, obviously the east lot is much, much larger than the west lot. Um, and coming in at about um, three times the price. Um, the reason for that is really the sheer quantity of pavement in the east lot. Um, and we can break that down for you in a moment. Um, but you can see that um, uh, the majority of those areas are really asphalt paving and a little bit of planting. Um, and that's what's driving the cost on the east lot. It's just the sheer quantity of pavement required to park the cars um, as, as desired. Um, in Ferry Wharf Way, um, so this is a smaller area of the park, but concentrates some costs because it does have those swing benches and plaza, which are a really important and defining character feature of the park and really, really I think will be an um, exciting experience for many park users, as well as the brick paving along Ferry Wharf Way. And then finally, the visitor center and restroom complex, which includes a pretty signature piece of architecture um, which is required to have a number of fixtures and amenities within it. Um, and so that's coming out with its um, associated plaza and a little bit of landscaping um, to about 1.6 million. So I just wanted to share this piece where it's sort of um, showing that the park costs are really balanced throughout the park. This next figure is a lot to digest and we're gonna walk through it together. Um, big picture, what this is doing is digesting um, a number of different categories of construction for both the park and the architecture within the park, the visitor center in particular. Um, and so we'll walk through each of these categories and then there's also a number of markups that have been applied. We'll talk through what each of those are um, to get to the bottom line construction total. Okay, so first off, I'm sure a lot of minds and eyes are going right to that construction total. So I think we wanna note that um, this is a little bit higher than your budget of $5 million. Um, and you know, we can talk through some of the reasons why that is. Um, and then that cost per square foot is a little higher, but puts you still below other comparison parks that we had looked at um, and provides some of the amenities and character um, that have been asked for by the community. Um, big picture, site preparation and demo includes um, removing all of the pavements, doing some excavation work, um, getting, getting the site ready for construction, silt fencing, protection. Um, earthwork includes a lot of um, the work around soils within the park, as well as some of the fill that's needed behind the berms to elevate those conditions to be, be a great platform for viewing the Merrimack. Utilities and infrastructure includes a lot of the civil and drainage work, as well as site electric work. Hardscape, you can see, is our biggest number. And what we've done is break that down over here for you, just so you can kind of see where the bulk of that number is landing. Um, so park hardscape is, again, it's, it's really where a lot of the really important character comes to life within the park. Um, so you can see that uh, a large portion of that is being held in asphalt paving. That's for the two parking lots, particularly the east lot, where a lot of that pavement is, is concentrated. Um, granite walls, which Letitia showed you in the um, rendering of Ferry Wharf Way, as well as the rendering of the Harbor Master Plaza. These are going to be important seating elements and, again, provide consistency with the detailing of the boardwalk, which has granite walls along the entire edge of the berm. Brick paving, which is really concentrated along those ways to the water, and again, is consistent with the detailing of the existing Summersby Way and Customs House Way, and has been really um, a request of the public throughout the feedback we've received so far. Unit pavers, these would be concrete unit pavers to provide a little bit of a specialty feel at some of the plaza areas. So the two plazas on either side of the embayment to help people slow down, as well as the, um, the plaza near the visitor center and the plaza um, and the plaza at the Harbor Master. Um, and finally, some concrete paving, which is really the paths around some of the parking areas, um, trying to be um, as economical as we can with some of those pathways. 
Um, so just walking, last thing, just to walk through a couple of these additional contingencies. Um, these are really um, helping us at this estimating phase, trying to um, tackle and represent as many of the construction costs as you might experience as possible. So all of these costs up here are fully loaded, including materials and installation, um, but they don't include the general conditions and insurance and bond that would be required for the contractor. Um, so those are two percentages, which you should be pretty familiar with. Um, the design and pricing contingency is a 10% um, right now. The reason for this is that we're at a very high level of the estimate, and we still have a lot of unknowns as we get into the more detailed design. So you can expect that this number will eventually be folded into this subtotal over the course of our design process. Um, so this number will eventually go to zero. The construction contingency is an amount held by the city to ensure that if there are changes to the design or unforeseen elements that are found during construction, you have a little bit of a budget to pull from. Um, escalation is really um, tackling any um, changes in price that might happen before the project goes to bid um, or while it's um, under construction. Um, and then finally, the construction administration is um, the only piece of Sasaki's um, design services that have not been budgeted for elsewhere by the city. Um, so this is a placeholder number just to ensure that we have the opportunity to help you um, work with your contractor to ensure the quality that the city wants. Um, so you can see that with all of those markups, um, again, that bottom line I know is one you're very interested in. So for the park, about 6.4 million, $32 per square foot. Um, and for the architecture, about 1.6 million. So just before we open it up to questions and comments and thoughts, um, we wanted to make everyone aware of the next steps. We're gonna hear a lot of your comments and thoughts tonight, and we're excited about that. Um, we would encourage you all to submit comments um, via the city's website by September 22nd, which is next week. Um, and we will be reviewing all of those in addition to what we hear tonight. Um, and then providing uh, some refinements and tweaks to the plan uh, via um, addi some additional work before October 7th when we meet with the ad hoc committee again. Um, it's hoped that, that at that point we could finalize the design and we'll then move into the final design detailing um, with hope to have a construction ready project um, that breaks ground in the spring of 2023. Andy, would you like to add any additional notes or anything to close before we open it up to comment? Um, no, thank you. That's great. I, I would note, by the way, uh, there is a project page. Uh, we might add a link to the, the main page of the website just for convenience for folks, but um, the link there, just because it's, uh, it's a long, uh, the way our URLs work. The, um, the city website underneath the planning department, there is a project page uh, for the Market Landing Park project. We will update that tomorrow morning to include the presentation slides, um, a link to the recording uh, of this presentation, of course. Um, and then uh, the ability to um, click on the, the form field to uh, put your any comments that you might have in there. And so as Kate mentioned, if we could get those comments from folks in the next week or so, that would be most helpful uh, to allow Sasaki time to incorporate any other um, considerations as they circle back with us on October uh, 7th. So. Yeah. Um, Chair Argument, I, I we would turn, turn yeah, turn okay. Um, right, thank you very much for the presentation. So we're 45 minutes in, so I do wanna be efficient before we, Go to the attendees. Um, first, I want to recognize uh, people who are a member of the committee, uh, or uh, you know whether ex officio or not. The mayor can't join us tonight, but she and I did see a preview, slightly different version of this presentation last week. So I'll report back to her on Monday. Uh, so please raise your hand if you had any initial reaction, uh, members of the committee, and then I'll then after that I'll go to the attendees. So uh, the first hand I see is Richard Jones. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, and um, hold on, I'm sorry, Kate, could you please just go to the overall conceptual site plan so that I think most people will be able to speak to that. Uh, go ahead, Richard. So um, as, as probably most know, I'm city clerk, but also parking clerk. And mm -hmm. I applaud the um, idea of the visual uh, screening of the parking area, particularly on the east, it just looks wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And uh, the numbers look as good as they could be. Um, switching hats for a minute, maybe from parking clerk to city clerk. Um, I don't mean to be critical because I think, I guess I do mean to be critical, that's what you want, a critique. 
But uh, it's wonderful uh, that you have this Ferry Wharf Plaza and the West uh, Employment Plaza and all the plazas and the sitting areas and the raised areas to view uh, the water. That's terrific. That's uh, to be applauded. What I, um, I'm cautious about is when I see a very preliminary architectural rendering of the info booth uh, restrooms and I hear terms such as let's look at our architecture here in Newburyport Market Square federalist architecture and um, give it a contemporary um, version. Whenever I hear the word contemporary, it bothers me. Across mm -hmm. the street from that is parcel eight, which was, yeah. in my humble opinion, and many, uh, a, a rather failed contemporary interpretation of what was right down the street. So I just um, suggest that it's very hard sometimes to follow and be imitative rather than be totally contemporary and creative. But the architecture that we need in a smaller scale is right there in Market Square. It's Federalist, it's brick, mm -hmm. it's square. Um, and without sounding too negative, uh, that was my suggestion. My other uh, final thought was uh, in terms of the uh, classical columns in the embayment area, that we know and we love. I mean, they're very successful architecturally, I think, and that they've been very well received for a number of years. I don't see those repeated in any area uh, of the shared use path. I, I realize it's expensive, it's granite, but um, it goes so well with what we've done uh, thus far. I, you know, in, in um, distinction to that, the in street fountain was a lovely attempt, but it's industrial pipes that never quite made it, in my humble opinion, compared to what could be there. So I just offer that. I don't mean to be critical. I think, um, I guess I do mean to be critical, but those are my thoughts. I'm a little bit biased towards classical rather than contemporary, but I do, I do, um, I do thank you for what you've done so far. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, next is Councillor Zeed. Councillor Zeed. I think you need to, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Councilor McCauley and I are here at City Hall, so he actually wanted to go first. Uh, go ahead. Okay, go right ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, so um, uh, first of all, thank you very much. I appreciate the hard work and, and uh, structure in this. Uh, it's very easy to follow, it's a lot of gold green. Um, I did have a couple of comments slash questions. Um, uh, I'm cautious about uh, the raised elevation uh, across the uh, front part of the park. Will that have an impact on the sight lines from let's say existing Market Square or walking down Green Street or anywhere else being on uh, uh, Merrimack Street going forward? That's a great question. I think um, we don't have the, uh, the CAD plan in here, but I think it's worth noting that the street is a little bit higher than the berm. Um, yeah. And so, so from this vantage point, your feet are still above the berm and you can see out across the park. Um, it's a little bit visible in this section, although um, it looks like the section needs to be a little bit tipped, um, but your feet here are higher than all of this elevation um, that is, has been raised. And so you will be able still to see out across that to the, to the water. Okay, thank you. Um, Next one on the uh, Ferry Wharf um, uh, area where you have the steps and the swings. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you only uh, showed just a snippet of it, but have we incorporated universal design in there to be inclusive of those who might need, uh, uh, in a, you know, accessibility issues? And, and I'm particularly um, specific about, I, I don't want it to look like ADA glued on to a project, yeah. right? And, and so um, have, have you addressed that and you just um, didn't show the picture? Yeah, thank you so much for raising that. I think for uh, we may have forgotten to mention it because for us, universal design is something we bake into every plan. Um, so we, we have designed all of these slopes to be less than 5%. Um, so that's not a ramp with railings. It's just a sloped walkway that everybody can use, um, whether you're pushing a stroller or using a wheelchair or walking, um, you, have, you have the ability to access that slope. Um, okay. the, the swings can be easily designed to be um, 
friendly to companion access. So someone could sit in a wheelchair next to that swing and be shoulder to shoulder. Um, so you provide a comparable experience um, for, for anybody who is um, differently abled. The, uh, uh, your question? Yeah. That immediate intersection of Ferry Wharf Way and the shared use path is all at the same elevation. Yep. The um, stairs that we showed are more in the western, tucked in the western corner of the plaza where there is a grade change mm -hmm. between um, the plaza and where the shared use path goes down to meet the embayment so that um, that area does have steps in it, but the entire rest of the mm -hmm. plaza and the paths beyond that, including the green lawn areas, are all at a level, um, a consistent level. And there's hey, accessible hey, access to the bottom and top yeah. of those stairs. Yep. And one last um, I, I know that um, the uh, restroom visitor center is still in flux. But my comment on it would be, um, you know, we've gone through some iterations where buildings are uh, parallel to both the river and Merrimack Street. And the comment is that it then becomes a visual blockage of uh, a sight line. Mm -hmm. And the sighting of that building, whether it be perpendicular to the river or at an angle that would, um, you know, let's say maximize the view corridors uh, down to the river from, from various parts of downtown, right? That uh, would be um, beneficial. I think it would uh, enhance uh, what you're trying to do there. I, I think from our standpoint, um, being able to see the river at many different visual points in Newbury Point is um, what is special to the people who live here all the time. So that's just a comment and, and mm -hmm. a suggestion uh, going forward. So thank you very much for your, your time and effort and uh, 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 the answers to my questions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I ask a few questions? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. So uh, um, I'll try and rattle them off quickly. The first one is, um, would you be able to produce a map like this that overlays the, the if there's any changes to any of the ways to the water so that we can complete that discussion as I'm sure you remember from earlier conversations that's a huge sticking point and I, I want to put it you know put it to rest as best we can and I'm not the best at remembering exactly where the lines were so it may be instructive if you can produce this and and overlay you know the original ways uh, to to answer probably in anticipation of questions you're going to get from others. Mm -hmm. So that's just a, a request, it's not necessarily something to respond to tonight, but I think that we should be very open about it and just talk about it rather than. Thank you, Councillor. We, we have been very careful to honor the agreement between the city and the settlers about the ways, um, as well as really interpret the intent of that agreement, which is to provide access for all of Newburyport to the water. Um, and, and I think you can see here the way in which the, the plan is trying to emphasize those ways um, and, and reintroduce as many of them as possible within the context of the plan um, and within the existing openings of the berm. Yeah, this is Andy. I would also add that Ferry Wharf Way is the only uh, adjustment or new way being added in there. Uh, the others are not being touched and that's the one that was left over uh, in terms of compliance with the settlement agreement. Good. That's kind of what I'm getting at. So that, that's helpful. Well, wait, wait a minute. Is that what about Central Workway? That's to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that new? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is new. Correct. And that's not. Yeah. Um, it's not as uh, as stipulated. Uh, let's say as Ferry Wharf Way is in that settlement, but it is created here in a location. Well, there, we're, well, there is a there is an obligation to make a good faith effort to place it near Unicorn Street, which has been done. So right. I, I mean, we should label that, that that is the spirit of Central Wharf Way. It yeah. doesn't have to be vehicular. Um, and it, you know, that's, I don't want that to get lost. We should label it. Yeah, I would agree with that, Councillor Agamemnon. The one note I would make is that we do have a way that's referred to as Central Wharf Way. And I just uh, would want to avoid confusion with established names for ways. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> My next question is um, on the, on the cost estimation. Um, how how current are your are your estimates relative to the construction costs we're seeing seeming to escalate every month? Are these like the last twelve months 
from Mascot or wherever you get your numbers or recent as opposed to like legacy, maybe even a year old, which could be obsolete at this point. Yeah, thank you for that question. We um, have been carefully vetting our unit costs for the estimate and um, have provided that back up to the city. It does include construction projects um, and bids that we've received very recently on projects that are ongoing within the city of Boston. Um, so we've been careful to reference those. Um, and one of the things that our contingency does is protect a little bit, um, as well as that escalation percentage, protect us all a little bit from the fluctuations of market prices for goods. Did we skip to the percentages so, so that everyone's reminded what they are? Sure, yeah. So while you're switching to that, I'll just ask my next question, which is, are you able to now with this schematic produce a maintenance estimation of cost based on how much is pavement versus how much is grass? Can you get to a point where you can tell us Here's how much we think it's going to take to keep this thing beautiful every year to a certain standard in mm -hmm. dollar amount, plus or minus something for us to consider. That is something that we can help with, um, especially in collaboration with your city parks department, um, who we've been speaking to throughout the process. Andy, I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit more. Um, we yeah. don't have those numbers for you tonight, but it's something we could do. Yeah, I agree with Kate on that. And we're a little bit uh, premature to have that level of detail, but we certainly uh, can effort some numbers on that, working with the Parks Department and the Waterfront Trust uh, in light of their uh, expenses to date and uh, what is being proposed here. Yeah, I think that would be very instructive um, and, and definitely make sure the Waterfront Trust is an equal partner in those conversations, given the potential path here that we've been discussing for years. I think we need to understand how much it's going to cost to care for what we're designing, because if, mm -hmm. if we care for it. We really need to think if that's the design we want. So that seems like an obvious conversation, but okay. So next one is um, with respect to the timeline. Um, so once you have the schematic uh, locked in, so to say, you think it's about a year to get to construction documents. Did I understand that correctly? To, to something you can go to bid with. Is it, that about? We're still establishing that timeline exactly. Um, but we are imagining that construction could begin in spring of 2023. Yeah, I would also add to Kate, uh, Kate's comment on that, just that some of that is iterative because we do involve, there is a permitting process, for instance, local, just a site plan approval, for instance, and so forth. So there's a little bit of iterative work that even if Sasaki, if Sasaki could work in a vacuum, you know, it could be done straightforward, pretty straightforward, but you have some iterative uh, review that has to be done on our end, even in the final design phase. Uh, and then, of course, by the permitting boards, the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, for instance. So there'll be other folks that need to insert um, details and, and feedback in this process, even going forward into final design. And so that's what would probably add a little bit more time frame to what otherwise might be a more compact time frame for Sasaki working just in a vacuum, per se. Oh, I understand. That's why, and I hope in that timeline, too, is all of the, the utilities and drainage concerns with the city engineer that we had brought forward. So... I understand that actually my, my bigger question was, you know, the council really needs to start having a more serious conversation about how we're gonna pay for any of this, if we're really gonna start in 23, because really we're in a fiscal year now, we'll be into the next fiscal year pretty quickly next June, end of next June, and then you're talking about something. And, you know, whether there's phasing or not, you know, there are gonna be grant applications. We did a CPC little touch point a couple of weeks ago or last week, but that's more for us internally that we, we're gonna have to get serious about how we're gonna pay for the, any of it. If it's a bond, what does that look like, et cetera. So I think the timeline should incorporate a, a city process on sort of the policy side, not your permitting, because they have a more defined process than we do. But when are you gonna bring a bond in if you are and how much is it gonna be and allowing for several months of deliberation. And that brings me to my last question. Um, Councilor Zeed, could I just speak to the point you just made uh, first, if that's all right? Sure. Uh, thank you. Just because it is a very important one that you brought up. Um, part of the reason why we work with Sasaki and they have a, uh, a schematic layout in here for how we might phase it in terms of areas of the park uh, or the uh, visitor center component, which might be funded from different sources, of course, just based on the, the components and, um, for instance, some of the federal money is trickling down, you know, trying to get um, leverage through some of those. So uh, we've tried to accommodate in here, recognizing that it may not be possible to do the, all the project at once, although that would be desirable and certainly efficient from a, um, a construction management and overhead costs uh, perspective. The, I would also be concerned about the impact on the downtown of phasing it over a series of years. 
Um, but that being said, what we are trying to do is make sure that Sasaki has a comprehensive plan for the entire area so that uh, working with that plan, we can then parse off as needed. And to your point, um, going forward, and, and it may be an iterative process that we revise uh, based on the, the final plan, uh, break it off into components if necessary to accommodate you know, your exact concern there, which is that we're able to fund it, uh, it, it may perhaps in pieces if we have to, uh, given that it's uh, in order of magnitude. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. And my head is there too, which is how if we start putting the funding plan together, we might better be able to answer for ourselves what we can face. But my last question is more immediate and maybe this is for the chair, but if, if that slide implied that the ad hoc would take a vote on the schematic, essentially stamping it approved, I, I really think that this is a point of inflection where we need to go back to the full council and, and get just like we did with the the the, uh, the so we are we're, we'll go to the full council. I would not. I would insist that it go to the full council. I just want to make sure that bullet point seemed to imply the ad hoc would sort of no 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 okay. no. We so, we're we are advising the council. Um, yeah, agreed. I'm all set then. Thank you so much to everybody. Okay. Councillor Shand. Thank you. So I just want to compliment you all on the, the shared use path. I think it's a, it looks very uh, new reportish, and I appreciate the, the difference between the two uh, types of uh, material you're going to use to delineate between bikes and pedestrians. I think that's really nice. Um, my question is, has a, the Harbor Master looked at the area that you have delineated for the dock storage? You know, I've never watched the docks come in and out, but I will say that it looks like a small area. I was just wondering if he's had any opportunity to comment on that one. I don't see him on the list of attendees. Just just wondering, I do believe that the docks yeah. have a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair Shand. Um, and I don't want to you know, speak for, for Sasaki, given we've been working together here on this, um, but Paul has been involved in the, the process here. Um, he hasn't looked at this most recent rendering per se, but he has definitely looked at the, uh, the earlier iterations of this heading into this. And uh, the biggest concern, we actually had a, a quite a detailed discussion in relation to this and the bulkhead project. Um, as you can see on the, uh, the schematic layout, uh, if you look really closely to the boardwalk, you can see the dock location. Um, I don't know if there's a cursor that could be placed on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, just the idea that we are essentially relocating from the, um, where Ferry Wharf Way uh, reaches the boardwalk um, we're relocating the dock insertion point a little further east. Uh, and so he has been coordinating with us on that. We've come to agreement on that. Uh, I know Jody Vining, the uh, bulkhead or uh, bulkhead wall uh, project manager for that project, we've all been working together and they are essentially incorporating in the um, work on the bulkhead to relocate that. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The diagram you were just pulling up was helpful. Uh, we had talked with him about the- uh, Memory. This, and he's agreed to the relocation of that. We all agree that it helps to benefit the park uh, work. What his biggest concern was the ability to reach from uh, where the crane access point is, uh, uh, in, essentially in the way that you know, it would use the, uh, the pedestrian path, which is wide enough and uh, can handle vehicle loading, um, to, uh, to put place the crane and then lower the docks. The area that they've provided is equivalent to what the dock storage area is today. It's just in a uh, more square shape than a longer shape. Well, um, long, long, long story short, he's, he's, he's in on this, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. We've, we've measured off of aerials you know, okay. the area that the docks yeah. currently take up, which flanks both sides of the path, is kind of condenses that together into one area. Um, but we can um, double check that as we go into the final design too. Okay. Gordy, I, I would just add that I talked to Paul Hogg about this yesterday and he is, he is um, you know, he, he's to completely fine with this sort of arrangement and this shift. And his main concern was that he really didn't want to go in the direction of the cost and complexity of shifting the docks down to Cashman Park. So he's happy with this sort of a, of a move. And then last but not least, it's just a comment. I do love the fact that you have trees in the parking area. I think that definitely helps break up the asphalt swath. So well done on that part too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next is Councillor Connell. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to Kate and Leticia, I think this is a, uh, you've done a terrific job of, of, of distilling the comments you've heard from what you stated were uh, approximately a thousand respondents or a thousand 
uh, points of comment here. Um, but before I get into the uh, individual elements that I'd like to offer either positive or feedback on or negative, I, I want to get back to the idea of uh, who was commenting. You know, when you do a survey or a, a focus group, um, selection of the sample is critical to the outcome of that conversation or that survey. Agreed. Um, do you have any indication of who it was who was responding? Were they Newburyport residents? Were they visitors? Um, and, and actually, I, I guess your comment might be, does that matter? So could you respond to that, please? Sure, I'm sorry we didn't include, we have a map of zip codes who responded to our survey. Yeah. Um, and I, Letitia, I don't have the number in front of me, but I, I remember it was, a, it was more than 90%, yeah. something like 95% Newburyport zip code. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, the vast majority of those that were responding lived in the city. Um, I would say that the, I, and I think we did report this data, the respondents were overwhelmingly Caucasian um, and on the older end of the age spectrum. Um, so we didn't hear from a lot of <laughs> families with children or younger, yeah. you know, 20, 20 and 30 somethings. Um, so I think that is, that is reflective of um, some parts of your demographic and, and you are absolutely right that it may not reflect all of Newbury Port's um, diverse community. No, I mean, that, we're, we're sensitive that's right. to that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 that's helpful. Thank you. I, I just think that we ought to be uh, building something that's consonant with the, uh, the desires of the people that are paying, paying the bills. Sure. So uh, let me go on to the, the individual elements that I identified that were positive, and then I hope you'll accept some criticism at the other end. Please. Um, uh, first, I think you struck a really good balance between the East and the West parking lots, and I agree with Councillor Shand that uh, having them shaded makes a big difference, not just from um, you know, the, the standpoint of, of, of visibility from the street, or but, but also in terms of the experience of parking your car and getting into it later on in the day when it's boiling hot. If it's been shaded, it's not quite as, uh, as uh, offensive uh, when you get on board. So I, I compliment that. I like the solar roof, but there's not a lot of solar exposure here for something like that. And if you could incorporate something related to um, uh, generation of um, uh, non-carbon producing energy on the site, I don't know where you do it or how, um, I think that would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. In those areas, for example, uh, that you call lattice work over the restrooms, I think you could extend solar panels over that, perhaps even over the swing sets. I don't know. Um, there's an aesthetic component to that that, that uh, you'd have to consider, and I'd like to see a little more in that direction. Um, Custom House Way. Well, no, no, let me also compliment you on this. The conceptual emphasis on Ferry Wharf Way, now maybe that seems obvious because it's down the middle, uh, but it seems entirely appropriate, and I, I like the way you've you've emphasized the Ferry Wharf Way as kind of the dividing point between different activities that can go left and right as you look up and down the river. Uh, and I, I compliment you for that because I think it's, it's, it's appropriate and, and really does kind of anchor the, the plan in the center geographically, but also in terms of use uh, in, a, in a place where things can, can spread out from there into seating areas near the water's edge areas that are perhaps a little farther back from the water's edge, or even areas that, uh, you know, where people are, are staging their, their visits from the cars. So I, I compliment you on that. Um, let me com comment on a couple of, of things. First, a couple of petty things. Um, I'm not certain that the plan fully responds to the threats of, um, uh, rising sea levels during coastal storms. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, quite honestly, you could, uh, but you have an increase in elevation of about, as I calculated, or as I saw it, about two and a half feet from the water's edge to uh, some areas along Custom House Way that were identified in one of your slides. I'm just questioning whether or not that's enough and whether it's sufficiently protective of the rest of the park. Um, Custom House Way, and, and actually there are two things I'd, I'd really like to focus on. It seems to me that Custom House Way is underemphasized. 
um, because of the, the migration kind of downriver, carrying your eyesight down toward Joppa Flats and out toward Plum Island, Custom House Way is an opportunity for us to fan out over the, um, the fishermen's monument there. I understand that the, um, that the Harbor Master's building is in the way, but if there was a way to fan that vista out, I think it's really impressive to look out down river, just as people have experienced on the, the new um, bike path past the water treatment plant, there's a bend in the river and people just stop and stare with their mouths hanging open because they look out over, over uh, Joppa Flats toward Plum Island. And late in the day when the sun hits that, it's spectacular. Mm. Uh, so I'd suggest that you look again at the, the way Custom House Way leads you down to the river's edge and carries your line of sight down toward that wonderful vista down river across the flats toward Plum Island. Mm. Um, Summersby Plaza. I, I'm not sure uh, quite what felt wrong about it, but it seemed to me that a cyclist coming um, down river from the uh, rail trail there behind the restaurants and hitting Summersworth, Summersby Plaza, uh, there was something about it that struck me as um, awfully busy. That conflict between folks that are riding their bikes, and I think this is going to be a popular bike path. I'd like to use it. Mm -hmm. And Summersby Plaza, we've really got to slow them down because this is more, more a pedestrian area now um, going forward through the park. And you can speed up on the other end, back behind the Coast Guard station. But I, 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 there was something about that visual image that you showed us that made me uneasy. I wish I could be more specific. I didn't take careful <coughs> notes. Okay. Um, two other things. One, I disagreed with the harbor master. I thought moving those those floats upriver. I know it's complicated, Paul, but I love that idea of getting them out of there. You, every couple of years, you've got to power wash those things. That's not something we should be doing right on the water's edge behind the harbor master's building. Uh, which is part of the park. I think up at Cashman would be a better location for that kind of maintenance of the floats. I, again, I understand that it's, that it's a little more complicated and uh, labor intensive to move them up to Cashman Park, but I always liked that idea. And I'd push back a bit and talk to Paul about the possibility of putting um, the, part, the, um, the floats upriver a bit and leaving the, the, the visual and the, the, the pedestrian experience a little bit um, more open without having the, 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 the dock stacked down there. And finally, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the money. Um, I'll leave that to Sharif. Um, handicapped access, uh, I, it seems to me, and I don't think this was intentional, that it's underemphasized. Mm -hmm. I would love to see this access to the swings, access to the water's edge, access to everything that we can enjoy here, to the artwork, um, equally, equally accessible to everybody, not inferior. And I, I, I'm, I don't think yeah. that, that frankly, the, the plan as I viewed it, and again, I'm only looking at what you presented tonight, which I, I, I think is terrific. I'm not sure that I have the same a uh, sense of, of um, equal access to all of the, the, the uh, of what this park can offer to people who may not be fully um, able to enjoy these, these uh, sites and these experiences on foot. And I hope you'll take that a little bit more seriously into consideration as you, you go through the next iteration. But otherwise, again, <laughs> it sounds like a lot of criticism, but I think it's a, a terrific step forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Parks Commission Chair Turner. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with some of the previous comments. I think this does a wonderful job of weaving together the best parts and pieces of the original three concepts that you showed us back in May. So I commend you on a really solid job here. I'm not going to um, dive into too many details. I appreciate the fact that you have a comment period open and I'll be sure to write in on that. Um, the mm -hmm. one sort of logistical question that I have that I didn't hear covered tonight is we spent a lot of time 
um, in the very early days talking about sort of the soil contamination and, and that sort of aspect of the park and logistics of trying to, you know, do a, a good job in being sustainable and, and handling what could be, you know, issues with, with raising soils that are, that are contaminated. And, and I certainly appreciate the elevation of the grade up at the river. Um, I'm wondering if you had considered that on some of the other areas closer to the street, what the soil profile might look like and how that might have impacted some of your cost estimates and also sort of some of the permitting that we'd have to tackle for that. So if you could just speak briefly on, on that piece of it. Or Latisha, maybe we can tag team on this one. Yep. We have been working very closely with VHB, who is our consultant providing an LSP um, on what the conditions are, um, understanding that profile in the various places that we're proposing paved conditions or fill conditions, um, as well as starting to think about um, areas where we may have to trench for utilities or dig for um, pole footings or bench footings or wall footings. Um, so we have taken that into account in the cost estimate um, and it will be taken into account in the permitting um, process and some of the schedule considerations. I think there is quite a bit of work to do as we get into the details on ensuring that each grade set meets um, our ability to not disturb contaminated soils to the extent possible. So um, that may that that will require really significantly um, intensive grading studies um, to ensure that we can um, leave contaminated soils where they are, only um, touch the existing cap, um, and then replace that as much as possible with clean fill um, or a paved cap condition. And uh, what is could, sorry, so I don't mean to cut you off. What do you, could you just speak briefly to what that cap looks like and how deep that needs to be? Yeah, we have quite a bit of detail from our LSP on that. And Kimberly, we can provide that to you. Um, but I, um, Letitia, do you want to, can you speak sure. to the details? Um, VHB, um, the LSP that we've been working with has recommended a three foot cap of clean soils on any, um, contaminated material that needs to remain on site. So I think that looking at those front areas that we didn't um, just go with the um, extending the elevation of the top of the berm, we've intentionally given ourselves room to raise it further mm -hmm. in other areas so, so that we can accommodate that material. And um, the design really, you know, mm -hmm tries hard to not dig down, but rather raise up knowing that um, we have those existing considerations and conditions to account for. And that's a three foot cap of clean soil for planted areas, but for areas where there is pavement, Kimberly, we are able to cap with the pavement. Um, currently the existing condition has quite a bit of areas that are capped with pavement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there will certainly need to be fine tuning in terms of yeah. the grading and things once we have a better understanding of how much material that will be um, excavating for the pathways and plazas and also footings and utilities. Thank you. Um, okay, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. Uh, before I circle back to Councillor Zeed or, or Macaulay, um, would it be all right, councillors, if I gave my comments and then well, I'll, I'll go with the city engineer, then I'll give my comments, then I really want to ask the attendees for their two cents, and then I will come back, okay? okay. So, so just bear with me. Um, city engineer, White. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, very nice job, everyone. Uh, Kate and, and Letitia and the team. Um, can you send us a uh, more detailed breakdown of the cost estimate so we can um, kind of help you out with local costs because we do a lot of paving in town that we can, get, we can um, and, and excavation work. We can we can give, give you some, hopefully some good numbers. We've been working with staff on ensuring that we are aligned with your recent numbers, John Eric, but we can um, have that de more detailed conversation. Happy to. Oh, and, and, I'm, and by all means, I'm sure you are. Um, but it, I, your detail is, it's not detailed enough. So I was just gonna to try to see if I could uh, provide any helpful comments at all. 
Yep. Yeah, uh, John Eric, this is Andy. Uh, Jordy and I will be actually reaching out to you with Sasaki. We uh, discussed this actually yesterday that we would be, or uh, sorry, early this morning, that we'd be reaching out to talk with you in more detail about city projects, both on the DPS and planning side and our experiences with costs uh, and how that rolls into Sasaki's own estimates. Sounds good. I uh, appreciate it. Um, can you also um, send the, uh, the ad hoc team or at least send myself your conceptual grading plan? I there's some key areas that I want to make sure that uh, that we maintain, like going from Market Square, uh, we needed a positive pitch from Market Square down Ferry Wharf Way right. into the into the east lot, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, yep, we understand. Yep. yep. That we have not good. changed those grades there, John Eric, yeah. just so you, perfect. you know that, but we can send that. Okay, that's perfect. The other uh, reason for reviewing the grades is, is the impact um, that sea level rise will have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, visually, it seems like to the west um, by Tuscan Grill, um, that, that ramp right there, you know, the water will come in there. It'll uh, go onto the shared use path. Mm -hmm. So if I can look at the elevations, um, you haven't put together a uh, any kind of flood inundation map related to um sea level in the current fema uh, floodplain have you done that at all we have not done that for this existing grade condition john eric not yet okay it, and, it and i certainly do not need that i can do that myself by looking at the grades and i can whip off for yeah. my own review um because my my immediate concern would be right mm -hmm. now you were you were tasked to meet the existing abatement elevations of the boardwalk Right. Uh, and we do get that. We do get that. Yeah. Uh, but right now, the West Embayment Plaza, the Ferry Wharf, Wharf Plaza, both those shared use paths uh, have to come down and meet the embayment. So mm -hmm. on the West side, you know, you made it clear that the bike path is low. So um, this is a general comment. Um, so if we know we're going to, if we know those areas are going to get inundated by water uh, during certain high tides in the future, Depending on the elevation, A, if the elevation is high enough, I'm not going to be worried about it because you've done a good job and that's, if, if we can protect it for 20 years, that's good. But the boardwalk is going to be raised and we're, right now we have a meeting with um, um, Jordy and Andy with the, uh, the engineer of the, of the uh, bulkhead project that's being redesigned now. We're going to push that they raise that. Now, I know that your scope is not to um, is not to you know design towards the future, but um, I think there's going to be a little overlap between the construction of this and the bulkhead, where we may be able to uh, if we can raise it a couple feet, that would be great. I just want to let you know about that. Um, John Eric, I would just suggest having some conversations with Jody and I about uh, the bulkhead project and what's included in that and what's uh, feasible because he's working heavily on that with the design team. Oh no, we're quite aware of it, and we brought it up at a resiliency meeting, and um, that that's just it's something that we really want to push. the 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 main impact for Sasaki would be their assistance on you know the areas that they would have to look at. Um, to do some regrading and, and this is the time to talk about it. So if we can accomplish, um, if, if we can improve the, the bulkhead, we know the boardwalk, the timber is going to be um, rotted soon or, you know, 10, 15 years, that might have to be replaced. So any, any bike path material, any, any hardscape, um, it'd be nice if we can keep it to a material that is easily, um, you know, our, we can remove and reset it, that type of thing. You know, just a thought, uh, Kate. Just you know, trying to trying to plan for for resiliency. It's very important for us. Agree, John Eric. And I think you know, as we get into the details, we'll be really looking for resilient and durable materials that can withstand occasional inundation, especially in areas that we know will be inundated, um, because it is not in the scope of this project to raise the um, raise the bulkhead. Um, but knowing, knowing that inundation will occur, we can ensure that those materials used are durable and cleanable so that the park can reopen um, as soon as possible after floodwaters recede. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Thank you very much for that. That is all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Harris? Um, 
Okay. Elizabeth, uh, go ahead. Yes. Um, what you, I think you've done just a fine job balancing so many interests and um, bringing all this has been going on for years to a near conclusion. Um, also, the details. Um, I'm sort of blown away by all the details of it. It's, it's a lovely plan, I think. I want to thank you especially for your thoughtful attention to the ways. I'm very pleased with that. And uh, I think it'll be great for Newburyport. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. All right, I'm going to go to the attendees. Uh, if any attendees want to comment, uh, there are about 10 of you. Uh, raise your hand electronically, and, and you can have two minutes. Let's give your name and address for the record. First is Joe Letourneau. Um, apparently, I'm not allowed to. All right, whatever. Uh, Mr. Letourneau? Uh, Joe, are you there? You'll have to. Yep, yeah, I got it now. How you doing? Go ahead. Good. So um, I'm just going to go right right to where I see my biggest concern. I know time is of the essence. Um, I, I just just need your I just need your address, Joe. Uh, my address? Yes. One fourteen Colby Street, Haverhill. Thanks. Go ahead. So just so uh, make sure everyone knows, I'm Joe Letourneau, captain of the fishing vessel Lady Rebecca, uh, full time commercial fisherman out of Newburyport. Um, so my my biggest issue is you know what I've uh, aired it out before with the entrance to the um, the harbor master's office and the commercial fish pier. I keep everyone ref hearing everyone refer to that area as the harbor master's office, but first and foremost, that is a federal working fish pier. Um, I do see and appreciate the design changes with room for a turnaround there. Um, I would be curious to know the exact dimensions of that turnaround and if it is feasible and sufficient for an 18 wheeler. Um, but one of the biggest problems I see is you've negated any possible advantage of, of that turnaround by then thinking that there are off peak hour times that setting that turnaround up in a, uh, in a way that visibly to visitors, it like this, this right here absolutely blows my mind that this would even be considered for the entrance to a commercial fish pier. Uh, we're, we're not bankers, we're commercial fishermen. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, we could be coming in and out of there with box trucks, ice, fuel, fish pickup, crew, deliveries, um, so I see major, major issues with just the visual aesthetics of that area, of it being even remotely inviting to, to people congregating there. And I think if not, if anything else, it should be quite the contrary and pretty clearly marked and labeled for safety that trucks turning, entering, you know, marking, signage, um, we already have a major issue with pedestrians there, and it's 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 a simpler entrance than this. Um, so th I think this is a much bigger discussion that needs to be had when we have more time. Um, and I, I think I'll leave, leave leave that that one at that. And then really quickly on the on the west side, the embayment. Um, I'm curious what your plan is for fire access for vessels that are in the embayment. Um, as I see here, there are the ways, um, but you know, in large snowstorms in the winter, I would be, I would like to render a bet that it's 24 to 48 hours before every one of those ways is cleared. And as far as I'm concerned with having a $200,000 investment sitting in that embayment during the winter months, uh, there's, there's completely insufficient fire, ac fire uh, equipment access there. And th those are my two main, uh, main issues. Every, everything else looks amazing, aesthetics. Um, I mean, it's definitely be a place people love to go, but I just think everyone needs to remember there, Newburyport was a fishing community uh, and, and projects like this have a very large impact and effect on the reason why there's a very small handful of us still fishing. Uh, one retired, two are close. I'm one of the younger ones, and uh, I just need everyone to remember this is a working waterfront. 
and I th uh, thank you for, for the time. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Wilbur Schenk. Um, can you hear me, Jared? Yep. Yep, go ahead. Um, Wilbur Shank, 1 Beck Street, Newburyport, um, and I'm on the Waterfront Trust. Is the, um, is the shared use path constructed so that it can handle emergency vehicles, especially, for example, from the west side? It, it is, it's, yeah. Yeah, and, why, why don't you the, go to the rendering? Okay. You do have a, you do have a rendering, Kate, so. You're asking this. about this one? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, no. From from further out, from the Summer Bee Landing area. Well, you, you've already answered my question. I think as, as long as that's constructed. No, I keep going, so Wilbur. I, I just wanted to get the the visual up. Keep going. This one. Yeah. Well, well Kate has got that up. The uh, the fire department has been reviewing and discussing this with us, and we have been making sure that the path itself. And we may have some um, grass pave or what whatever you call it on the side of the the paved path. There's different materials, but grass pave uh, to provide some additional loading outside the paved area if needed at say a turning movement. But generically speaking, yes, those paths are designed to provide that emergency access uh, for them uh, to the central embayment and um, to other locations in the park. And, okay. and equally, equally, I guess, is access to the fishing boats in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard about that. That's so correct. Sounds like Right, we were trying to make that sure that Harbor Master, uh, the, the boaters, uh, fishermen, uh, and the fire department could all get access as needed without uh, necessarily impacting the aesthetics of the park. Perfect. Um, that was my that was my main question. Um, I think overall, I, I personally, I really like the design. Um, I think they've done a wonderful job. So thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to go back to our group. I don't see any other hands in the attendees. Uh, I'm going to give my two cents. I'll go quickly. We've been at it for a while. Uh, first, I, I, I think uh, it's undeniable that the Sasaki team has listened. And I mean that not just literally to what they heard, but also they read all the documents that took us thousands and thousands of person hours to produce. And I think Ms. Harris uh, said it more succinctly. The ways of the water look good. Um, the budget is in the ballpark of what we asked for. I mean, it has a 33% contingency on top of it, which is probably wise the way, you know, government works, but you're in the ballpark and I'm pleased with that. You didn't come in with something that was just completely nonsense. We're not Cincinnati. We don't have 300,000 people. We don't have a metropolitan area of 2.2 million. So, you know, thank you. I, I, the one concern I have that's major, everything else is minor, is sea level rise. Um, I mean, I, I was going to ask where you were with John Eric White, but I mean, I don't think this is going to be ready. I'm worried for a vote by this uh, committee in October, let alone the full council, unless we figure out that specific issue. It's a big deal, you know, and, uh, you know, figuring out that we've raised grades enough. So you, you've got to nail that uh, for next time. And it may not be a legal precedent, as if there were any in the report, but um, it will be a kind of a policy precedent where, you know, New England development has to deal with their grades. And someday um, the, um, you know, the old Boston Edison or whatever we call it is uh, an electrical station on Water Street, that's going to be redeveloped. So believe me, it matters what we set these grades at. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the design. Um, I think the layout is great. I mean, uh, let's, let's just, you're, you're, you're close. You know, some of the criticisms that you have from, from people who have been at this a long time, you know, I, it's one of the reasons I put Councillor Connell on this. He's been a counselor for 20 years or so. But I, I, think, I think you're going to get there. And some of it may have been misunderstood. Um, uh, he had made a comment, for example, about disabilities access. And I mean, I, I just know from looking at this plan and your renderings, it is, it is disabled access. And frankly, you could not be in business if it weren't. I mean, it just, that's a non-starter. I mean, it's just, Agreed. you can't, you can't do a public park and not make it accessible to wheelchairs and so on. So I'm, I'm, I'm I think that's a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and then the vista of the river mouth. I mean, I, I, I hear that, but, you know, I just, uh, we do have a vista. It's actually that federal fishing wharf that Mr. Letourneau mentioned, you know, that is open. I mean, yes, there are trucks there. You could get squashed. 
but that's actually the view, the gray area to the far right. Um, you know, we really, we're not gonna be able to demolish the Harbor Master building. I mean, it, it is where it is. And, and you'll recall that there was a, 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 you know, well, Sasaki wasn't around, but there was a drama even where we put that building because originally it was gonna go line up with the custom house and the custom house and uh, a waterfront trust and settlers, uh, really Bill Harris insisted that it be shifted mm -hmm. to the east. So I don't wanna reopen that battle. I'd rather stick needles in my eye. Um, the, uh, the truck access, I, again, you heard from Captain Letourneau and um, we just talked about it again with Mr. Shank and it's, it, you've done it. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you know, there's only so much you can do. I have, I have done projects in, even in uh, uh, designated port areas in East Boston, uh, where it was vital to have the truck access and the solution that you put in is very similar. You know, so I'm, I think it's gonna be fine with Mass DEP. And uh, you know, if, if we can't have people playing cornhole in that Harbor Master Plaza as much as we like, okay, so be it, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that's how it goes. But those are removable, those aren't fixed. Those aren't fixtures, so we'll make it. We'll make it work. Um, I'm more at peace with the uh, design of the uh, visitor center slash bathrooms than uh, Parking Clerk Jones. Um, I, I I guess I've come to I've become accustomed to one Merrimack Street. I've been beaten down, so I, I'm not that violently opposed to it. But I respect his opinion highly. What we're agreeing on, though, and I hope everyone does, is the aesthetic of brick. I, I, I really despise, you know, the sort of Cape Cod shingle nonsense that's there now. It doesn't belong. Um, okay. Um, my nit on design, you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, fancy doodads, I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it last week, but I'm worried about your swings. I think you want to look at that more carefully about vandalism and durability. Um, we can, it will be a cost. I mean, Councillor Zed asked you about costs. So in the winter, if you wanted to, you could, you could unhook them and store them somewhere, I don't know where, in order to keep them away from storm damage. But, you know, we do have vandalism problems in the report. It's not like the old days where, you know, if you read old daily news, every time they planted a sapling, it would be destroyed within like three days. But, uh, you know, right now we have a really bad problem with kids smashing windows, and it does appear to be kids. And um, they also, they've hit our library a couple of times and they, you know, they spray painted on the library wall recently. So, you know, this ain't Mayberry, you know, let, let's, let's be realistic. Mm. Um, that segues to my budget comment. Um, I, I know we're all anxious to build everything right away, uh, I, you know, but I, I think it would be a major, major victory for the city of Newburyport. Um, you know, you've heard very little criticism of your plan. We are close. If you can figure out the grades, I don't see a problem with getting your plan approved by the full council this fall. And then if we can identify enough money to keep going on the schematic drawings, you know, that, that'll take you through another year. Um, but I don't think I, I'm not ready. Speaking for myself, I just, I, and I really doubt you have eight votes to bond for the full like 8 million plus this fall. I just don't see that. Mm -hmm. And and I know we're all impatient. We want to get it done. We want to build the one point, uh, the, the one million dollar ferry wharf plaza because it's cool. We want to do the one point two five million quote special elements. I think it was, you know, the giant fish, the boat sculpture. Mm -hmm. We want to do the visitor center right now, one point six seven million. But I I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Let's let's take it easy. You know, this is not the only park that needs attention. You know, we only just Monday night finally coughed up a couple hundred thousand for our original town common, Bartlett uh, Mall. And, you know, this is eight million in one slug. And, 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 I, and I, I know it's unpopular, but too bad. You know, this park is heavily used. It's beloved, more probably more beloved than Bartlett Mall. Tourists dig it. It generates a lot of business for our downtown. But it's the residents that are gonna pay for this project. Even if it's in the form of grants, those are grants that aren't going to neighborhood parks. So I just ask for more respect for the big picture. That's all, I, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Um, to sum up on procedure, 
look, I'm again, you, if you figure out these grades, you get with John Eric, we have an answer and we don't just keep going in circles. You know, yeah, I could come back to the ad hoc committee in early October. And then we have two scheduled meetings of the full council, uh, October 12th and 25th. And, you know, so that's, that's the schedule. So I, again, overall, I, I think this is great. I think you're close, but you know, you got to nail those grades. And, and I think we need to get realistic. We are not passing an eight and a half million dollar bond order in this session. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor. Could I just uh, respond to one comment? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the budget, I, I would agree that I think that's a, a large number to expect all at once. I certainly would expect multiple sources. And I think that's part of the reason why um, we had initiated some conversation with Sasaki and why you see their, their breakdown by area. I do think there may be a need to uh, do this project in phases. Um, my biggest concern is just making sure that we have a comprehensive design, but I, I think you're right to some degree there is going to probably be a bit of phasing, uh, if nothing else, just based on the availability of funding. Right, right. No, I, I didn't. I, I, I specifically said I would support funding for the design. I, I do want to get all the design done. I think that's wise. I, I don't want it to be an unknown, but the building, I just don't think that's fair to the city. Um, Councillor Zita's his hand up again. He's moved home, so maybe it's better audio. Yeah, thank you, uh, and hopefully it is better. I just have a very brief comment. I wanted to suggest, Mr. Chair, that uh, procedurally, I, I would think we should put this presentation into the packet for the 27th, refer it to the ad hoc, and then we can bring it back to the council, as you mentioned, in October. I, the reason I suggest submission of it, and I, didn't wa I wanted to mention it in case you wanted to do it, or if you don't, I'd be happy to do it, that we have a, a platform to bring it back and adopt it essentially by resolution of the city council. Um, I, I think, you know, because October 6th is after, then you're going to put yourself on another meeting to bring it in and then refer and then bring it back out. I, 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 Councillor, I'll, I'll figure that out. But, but also, I would not have us vote on this PowerPoint presentation. It's, it's going to be something different than this. But I don't worry that it's going to go to the full city council after all these years. It's not going to be a lick and a promise by this committee. It's going to be a formal resolution by our council. Very good. I'm all set. Thank you. Councillor Connell. Yeah, I'm just chiming in again on uh, what Councillor Zeed has just said. I, I, I agree with him. I think we do need a, a formal um, vote on this by the council, and the sooner the better. Uh, my, my concern is that the price tag is high right now, and I agree with the council president that uh, we're not going to do it in one bite. We're going to take a few bites out of this apple and uh, move it along over a period of time. Uh, so I, I hope, um, and, and I'm sure we will talk informally about how to uh, approach this from a parliamentary standpoint, but uh, uh, I, I think it's important to get something before the council sooner rather than later. And that, that, that's the, the gist of what I'm trying to say. Understood. Again, there will be a formal resolution with something that at least I consider binding. Yep. As Thank the you. president. Uh, anyone else? We've been at it here for a while, and I, I, I want to be respectful of people's time. I mean, did, did you any, you know, you, you, Kate, you and Letitia have to go off and respond. So anything you want to clarify before you do that? No, I think this has all been really helpful feedback. And I think there are probably a few diagrams and exhibits that we can prepare yeah. that can help clarify a couple of the points of question about accessibility and grading, um, both of which have been carefully considered and just um, we need to help help that story come through um, in the graphic material that we provide to you all. Uh, also, um, you know, we do have site plan uh, guidelines, site plan review guidelines in our code. I mean, no one ever reads them, but but there's a there is a section on um, parking lots and how they have to be vegetated. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you're good designers, you actually came really close anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, but take a look. You know, that there's a minimum number of trees and, and so on. Agreed. Yep. Thank you. And, and pervious surfaces. Excuse me. I'm jumping in on that. All right. I think we're all set. How about a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> Um, I have to do roll call. Councillor Connell. Yes. Councillor Zeed. You still there, Councillor Zeed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Councillor Shan. Yes. I think we've lost Councillor McCauley, and yes. I'm a yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone, for your patience. Um, I'm going to ask Andy, could you please post this on the website 
Yes, right thank you for clarity. We'll post both the slides, uh, the recording of this, uh, and then the access to the comment page. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.